the struggles of being an app developer. There are a few tiny struggles. They are like so so tiny. They are not even actually worth complaining about. And there's no one to blame for except myself. Um, so you can call them micro struggles if you want. Really, no big deals, but. I've just been like on a normal day where I program and do all the things that I do as an app developer. I've been writing down all the things that went wrong for me and that were tiny struggles. And yeah, just want to tell them to you and see if you can relate to them. Yeah, let's see. I'm sure I can. <laughs> do, do you do the releases on App Store and on the Play Store sometimes? Uh, I used to not. Uh, I haven't done it recently. One thing that this is number one that is kind of annoying is I write this great change log in two languages, on, in German and in English, on App Store Connect. I say hello. No, it's been a while for this update. We fixed this. I write down all the changes. I say I hope you enjoyed the update. Send us feedback, etc., etc. And I go on and go on. I submit the iOS update. And then the next thing I do is I make the Android update. And then I try to copy over the release notes. And then on the Android, the release notes are like limited to 500 characters. And then I was like, what? Ah, now I need to like rewrite everything again or like remove sentences. And it's like, doesn't even have like a character counter. And this input field is like, XML, really clunky. <laughs> Just had to get that off my chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is there a way you could improve the change log stuff, process? Or? Hmm. I mean, it's up to Google to, okay. to fix it. I mean, 500 characters. I want to tell the people what, what great bugs I fixed. But um, yeah. Just, I guess, I have to be more aware of it next time with this limitation. Mm, all right. I will avoid frustration. Okay. Number two. This is in React. I have a component and I use it somewhere. And then I decide that I want to refactor it. For example, I want to rename a prop. Yes. So I change the component uh, prop. I, I change the prop in the file that is the component. And then I go to the other file where the component is used and I change it there. So now the question is, which file do I save first without making the app break? So if I would first save one file, then there would be like a red box in React Native that says um, that, that crashes because uh, I put the wrong prop. Yes. And if I save the other file, then the same thing happens. Like the props do not match up. Yes. So no matter which file I save first, it's going to break. Mm. Even though technically it's a everything one change. is yes. correct. So, and then I have to reload. Mm. Yeah. Yes. No, I know what you mean. You wouldn't, yeah. Do, do you have a solution for that? No, I don't. Uh, I guess, guess just reload. Yeah, I I know there's like a shortcut to like save all open files, but it, but it wouldn't help, right? Mm, oh. It does not always. Sometimes when I'm lucky, but yeah, that is uh, another minor struggle. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's not a big one. This one, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? I mean, no, no. It's, I never it's, uh, I never <laughs> think thought about it. I was like. It, it's very minor. Yes. I mean, it's not... If that's your biggest struggle as a solo developer, <laughs> I think you're, you're doing great. <laughs> no, it, it, it's not. It's, uh, I mean, it doesn't ruin my, ruin my day at all. But I, mean, I just want to talk about the small details in yes. my, my workflow. And I mean, there Maybe are... you have a solution. <laughs> no, but uh, actually I'm quite inspired by what you're saying because you see the fact that uh, these small annoyances, I don't even think about them. I think I should because if I would, uh, I could improve my productivity by a lot if I would think about these little details. 
one thing that I have in mind that makes me think about this is that the git commands, I always write the same git commands. And at the, I mean, it adds up over the years to uh, lots of times. And you like, I'm always writing uh, by hand, git push origin, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, at least I should have like aliases. And you know, it's like a, a tiny, small thing, but I think uh, over time it adds up to a lot of uh, safe productivity. And um, same, I always lose time, you know, doing uh, rebases, but I do interactive rebase. Even though actually I want to squash everything into one commit, and I think there's some commands, Git commands, that can do this automatically in, within one command, and you don't have to deal with conflicts and so on. Um, so on the Git side, I feel like I could, uh, uh, and I'm inspired that you see these small annoyances because I feel like also I should look at my own workflow and see how it could uh, be improved. Yeah, right. Especially with Git, there's. I mean, if you would probably just um, like adhere to some to some rules and best practices do like these small commits just to do one thing per branch you could save a lot of uh, work but then it's like just doing just being a little bit too lazy and then like a huge conflict appears with my co-workers and um, yeah if I could have probably avoided that <laughs> Okay, William, the third thing, the third mild annoyance is in React Native, I refactor like 10 files, move everything around. Um, because sometimes you just have to shuffle things around, right? That's just, there's just no yes, way around yes. it. <laughs> and I mean, some, you gotta change it up. <laughs> some re architectures don't allow that uh, you just like change one or two files, you have to change everything. And then I have like 20 changed files. I save them and then I get the following error message. Text strings must be rendered within a text element. Yes, I know. And about this, this one. is because while I was cutting and pasting, there was some white yes. space left over. And once Prettier yes. runs over it, the white space is still there. And it's like you don't immediately see in which component it is. And then I have to go through each component yes. and find. This one extra space yes. that crashes my whole app. Yes, that's uh, that happens to me a lot. But in my case, I think because Preacher is, oh, no, I have some ESLint rule that is going to rewrite this space into bracket string space. Is that the same for you? Yes. Because then yeah, it makes yeah. it a bit that easier helps. to find that helps. Oh, yeah, that but helps. But then a lot. also the Yeslin plugin should remove it, right? But maybe we should do the plugin that removes it. I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, there's, so there is an Yeslin rule actually for this, which oh, cool. uh, makes sure that strings are only within text. Um, but then what if you make your own custom component, my component, and that allows text as children? For example, if I make a paragraph component, and then that yes lint rule will give you a false positive, so that rule is not really. But worth in my React Native time. project, it wouldn't happen, would it? Um. Yeah, it it's would. It's only for re oh, Okay. So so there's like text, there's view, so you cannot put strings within a view, um. But if I make my own components, like paragraph components, that it, I can make it that. Uh, it takes text as children, and then internally it wraps that into text. But uh, you would I I meant to have a string and node as a children as a siblings. In React oh. Native, you I mean you could I guess. I mean you could you yeah for sure you could but it's not uh, something you see often. But anyways I mean this happens also what you said in React JS and here it's like. Uh, uh, regular pattern that you would see so yeah in react JS, you don't actually get an error if you have more white space than you intended which might lead to you to actually ship the bug but yes so it's actually good that this comes up but uh, yeah just wanted to also get that oh, yeah. off my chest all right sounds good i mean <laughs> for sure it's not our 
Uh, we fun. love React Native, but for sure there are bigger challenges <laughs> when writing React Native, right? When being Absolutely. a React Native developer. See, I, I, don't, I don't have an idea how to improve it. It makes like perfect sense that they put this error message. Yeah. Yeah. Number four. Okay. <laughs> when, so, I, I make a component. It's going to be big. I import everything. I to like animated or create animated component and then use animated style and do that. This actually happened uh, uh -oh. to my flatmate <laughs> this, uh, last week. And it's like use animated style. And for some reason, it would just uh, not apply the styles that we have uh, defined. And I was looking through it. I, it I saw, okay, this looks correct. You have the newest reanimated version. Everything is... Is, is correct. I don't see why it should not work. And you know what the problem was? Is it uh, because you were reusing the use animated style? No. <laughs> That's another <laughs> no, <laughs> issue. Add another one to the list, but... <laughs> 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 no, it was because he accidentally imported animated from React Native instead of free animated. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So, so like, the autocomplete just... Yes. Um, Sometimes makes you import this the wrong use, thing. This uh, used to uh, use to happen a lot to me, and I guess now because I'm not sure. I'm gonna make a wild guess. Is that now because I use Tamna in plugin? So I guess now since I really only use reanimated, somehow it's not even suggesting animated anymore. But I don't know. But I used to have this problem a lot. Okay, <laughs> shout out to Tab Nine, which. Completely solved this problem I'm for you, maybe. Not <laughs> sure, but I need to start using it. Then, uh, alternatively, what also often happens to me is I often import touchable opacity from React Native yes. Gesture Handler. This is a and common one too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I later realize that uh, yeah, that some small bug comes up. So yeah, another struggle. I can live with it. It's not a big one. But these are... But maybe yes, it's... Uh, these are real. Yeah. But maybe someone else feels it just like me. But you see, again, I mean, I, I should stop talking about ESLIM <laughs> plugins, but if you're a large organization and you see you have these small annoyances, you make an ESLIM plugin for your teams. So, you know, for instance, uh, uh, you have no communication between vanilla animated and reanimated and stuff like that. Or, you know... You could even uh, force, I mean, I'm not sure you want to do this, but you could even force people to not use uh, some components from gesture and learn and so on. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, This is why we need to talk about these small details. Absolutely. So that someone can make an easily true. Yes. I mean, I always think it's just me, but maybe it happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then... The fifth and final one, the Swiss keyboard. And this just <laughs> happened <laughs> earlier to us. So with American keyboards, you have dedicated keys for curly braces and for back ticks. Yes. Oh, but man, on Swiss keyboards, it really is a struggle. So to do like a back tick, I have to do a command and then yes. put my finger on... Number Bra seven. You mentioned curly braces and brackets as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that as well. And also, uh, bra I feel like brackets is such a common shortcut, key shortcut in software. I don't know. It is. In, yes. So it means you don't have it. You know, you cannot access it so quickly in Swiss keyboard. Yeah. So I think the reason why we use curly braces and brackets and back ticks is it's probably because, I mean, Americans invented these languages. Yes. And so much easier for them to type, and we have to like hurt mm. our hands. So, I mean, my laptop is using the American English keyboard. I, that's how uh, I buy it. That's smart. If I would be in France, I would also buy the American English keyboard. Even though it's then you, you need to write French, it's a bit annoying, right? Because you don't have like the accents and so on. Did you consider yourself buying a, a laptop with a English American keyboard? See, I never really thought about it, but now I wish I did. Mm, maybe so, next one, though. Yeah. So, like, 
the reason why the Swiss keyboard is so complicated is because we have like these three extra letters Ö, Ä, and Ü. Sounds <laughs> wonderful. <awkward. laughs> Which uh, English doesn't have. So, but it's a huge trade off to be able to use this. Uh, yeah, so you would have the English American keyboard, then when you have to write German, you would uh, struggle, right? Yeah, right. And I have, of course, I grew up with the Swiss one. Another one, another problem with the keyboard, and this, this I totally blame Apple for, is that the keyboard layout on a MacBook is not the same as it is on a white numpad. Yes. Or, or like on a white keyboard that they sell on. Or like the one with a numpad has a different layout than the one without numpad. Yes. And it's about the position of the option and command key. Yes. And on the small keyboard, this that the, you can do command dot to like trigger TypeScript auto completion. And uh, like it's pretty much like um, the the dot is to the right of the command key. On the other hand, on the white keyboard, which I use at work, the dot is more like on the left side of the command key. It's like shifted. So I tend to sometimes press command comma, which is like some other command. It messes everything up. So this I can relate, and it happened to me this week, actually, because um, like the past few weeks, I've been only working on my laptop. So directly on the keyboard laptop. And then finally I had to record a video. And so it's a video that will be released today and you can totally see it in the video because then I went on the keyboard to type the code and I was completely thrown off because of the slightly different keyboard layout. Yes. And you can tell in the video at the beginning, like it takes me five, 10 minutes to warm up. And I like mistype keys. You're probably like, what, what's happening? And I'm like, I'm like so confused. And uh, yeah, so I can I can definitely relate. Mm -hmm. And usually, I guess I don't see it because I uh, used to switch over so many times between the two keyboards that I would get like used to each one like separately. But then after like few weeks of only one keyboard, then I couldn't uh, type properly. I mean, was not great, but yeah. Yes, I I guess we can also <laughs> live with that. We have bigger problems, but man, it felt yes. good say these things, Hasla. Yes. And now nice. I can live more in peace, I think. Yes. 